Today, we are in our 101st country, which also happens to be the smallest and richest nation in Africa. Aside from its natural beauty, the unique and fascinating history and people with heritage from three different continents all make this one of the most distinct places we've traveled to so far. I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today, we're in the Seychelles. We're starting today at the Grand Cast Museum, where we are going to learn about the history of the Seychelles. We read online that this is like the place to come in the Seychelles to see old maps and learn about the history of this really fascinating country. So we're really excited to see it. So we learned most of the history we know about the Seychelles from Geography Now, a channel we love. But one thing they told us when we arrived, actually, which I forgot, this house was where the original settlers of this island lived. They were from France, so this was their house all those centuries ago. On this little island. Just imagine back then arriving here and being like, this is in the middle of the ocean. Just these huge green mountains, like, wow. And another thing that we actually had no idea about previously is that there was no one living on the Seychelles before settlers arrived. It had been a bit of a pirate holdout, like some pirates here in the Somali Sea had been, you know, using these islands as like refuge every now and then. Arab traders had passed by here and stuff like that, but no one really settled here until the French came. The first European explorer who found these islands was Vasco da Gama from Portugal and Silhouette Island. This island was the first one that he discovered. So it's just really unique to have a modern day independent country that had no pre-colonial history, basically. This is the first time ever that Silhouette Island, the place we're on, was on a map. 1744, someone drew it up here. And just to think, like, that's the first time ever someone documented the existence of this place. It's so mind-boggling to imagine a time when, you know, the world map was basically as filled in as the map of the universe is today. Like beyond a certain point in all cultures, they just didn't know what was there. Nowadays, we just look at a world map and like we know it so well by heart because you know, that's the only type of world map that we've ever seen. But if you look at all these maps here, like they're so different, even from like the same time, they represent things so differently. There was no real consensus on this is what the world actually looks like. So although August is supposed to be one of the nicest months weather-wise, we have had very mixed, oh my God, there's such cool fish here. Look. Look at this. Check it out. Yeah, there's two of them here. There's a bigger one also. Oh, it's so amazing. Like it really feels like Jurassic Park because there's so many animals everywhere. If you just look without like focusing on something, you don't really notice. But then if you try to notice all the details, you notice, oh my God, there's a crab, there's a crab, there's a crab. Oscar was like, uh, you never concluded your thing about the weather. That's right. <laughs> I'd say it's been pretty stormy, like 70% of the time. I'm seeing in the rain in the Seychelles. But at least it's made us just like do really cozy stuff, watch Heartstopper, which was definitely our plan for Country 101. All right, bye-bye. Gorgeous view, a little hammock. Oh, almost the hammock. The time has come to leave Silhouette Island and head back to the main island of Mahe in the capital of Victoria. It's gonna be really nice to see that side of the Seychelles as well, as we've only really seen the nature side of it so far. So let's head there right now. Just got out of our little van here in the center of Victoria. Oh, you okay. almost got hit by that car. Bro. So we're gonna explore the city a little bit. I mean, it's probably gonna take like 15 minutes because it's so, so tiny. It's just very interesting to see. Apparently almost everything here closes at 4 p.m., which gives me anxiety when I just hear it, like thinking every store, every restaurant. I'm like, oh my God. I'm definitely a bit scarred from growing up in Sweden because things just shouldn't close at 5 or 6 p.m. But we're gonna make the most of what we do have of Victoria. So now it's 4.40, so it's gonna look a bit abandoned, but still, you know, super interesting to see. For example, when I visit the National Museum of History, Sorry, it's closed. What? Oh, yeah. me. And also, it's not just us saying that it's a small city. We told our driver, we're like, um, okay, we're gonna try not to get lost. He's like, there's no way 
you're gonna get lost in Victoria. <laughs> the Seychelles in Victoria may be small, but we were honestly surprised by the plethora of things to do here and especially how difficult it was to decide on a hotel. And that's why we'll definitely be using today's video sponsor, Magic, to plan our next trip. Magic is a completely free AI travel tool that helps you plan a customized trip based on your preferences and needs. Simply tell Magic where you're traveling, how long you'll spend, and anything else you want Magic to know, like your dietary preferences, if you prefer history or nature or cultural experiences, and Magic will plan your own custom itinerary complete with restaurants and sites and even the transfer time between each location. Magic also helps you choose the perfect places to stay by compiling reviews and comments from all over the internet in a summary so you know exactly what to expect from a hotel. For example, what are people saying about the gym, the location, or the service? Magic puts all of this concisely on one page so you don't have to do your own research. Like I said, Magic is completely free, including when you book through the platform. What's more, each time you book, you collect Magic Elixir, which can then be used toward discounts on future bookings. We're so excited for you guys to try out Magic for yourselves and see how it can help you plan your next trip. Simply click the link in the description or in the pinned comment and uh, give it a try for yourself. Now, let's get back to the video. Victoria has been the capital of the Seychelles since its independence. It was originally called L'Etablissement by the French who claimed and settled Mahe Island in 1778 before the British took over and renamed the city Victoria in 1841, of course after Queen Victoria herself. The city, along with its suburbs, has a population of 26,000, representing roughly 26% of the country's total population of almost 100,000. Pretty easy math here in the Seychelles. What's so fascinating about the Seychelles is that it's so a mix of cultures and places. So in some ways it really feels like a tiny bit Indian, in some ways it's African, but in some ways it reminds me most, or us most, of the Caribbean, just because it has that sort of Creole and definitely the relaxed island vibes. While Christianity is by far the biggest religion in the Seychelles, there is also a sizable Hindu community here. Already during the 1901 census, approximately 18% of the Seychellois population spoke Tamil. Fast forward to today and 2.4% of the population is Hindu and 6% of Seychellois have only or mostly Indian ancestry, but a much larger proportion of the population is thought to have some Indian ancestry too. Other than Indian, most Seychellois are of mixed African and European descent and speak a French-based Creole language. But most people speak English too, due to the British colonial history. Oh my god, there's a bubble tea place. <laughs> All right, Oscar has convinced me. I mean, yeah. even I'm so intrigued. Like, boba in the Seychelles? Yeah. What is that? Like? Boba is bubble tea. It's just, some places call it boba. Bubble tea has always been a part of my life. <laughs> no, not really. But when I was introduced to it, I didn't like it. I think it's one of those things most people don't like when they first try it. And it takes a while to really fall in love. And Boba Guys in San Francisco was the place that made me fall in love. There were periods of my life where I had it every single day. <laughs> now I've cut down a little bit, but it's, it's just so satisfying. It's the perfect drink. <laughs> It's perfect. Thank you. All right, so Seychellois bubble tea. Yes, yeah, actually slaps. pretty good. <laughs> and the funny thing is, the pearls taste a tiny bit like coffee, mm. which is a new twist. I, I haven't tried it. This backdrop in the center of a city is insane. Now we're quickly checking out the biggest shopping mall in all of the so like it's, a hard, it's a hypermarket, so yeah. mainly this is what we're here for. We love exploring supermarkets in new countries. We always find it so fun to try to picture, get a little glimpse of what it would be like to live in a place. And obviously grocery stores are a huge part of that. What can you find? What's generally imported and more expensive? Like just getting all that data is so fascinating and it gives you more picture of the place we think. Well, they have a lot of chocolate. This is absolutely huge. This is so interesting that most of the things are like enormous. Because I guess when you're importing stuff, since obviously nothing is made here, it makes much more sense to buy things and import it in bulk, in huge portions. Or right? this is just a bulk store. Yeah, that could, could be, be either. Okay, we got the instant ramen section. I'm so hungry because we didn't have lunch, so. Yeah. Especially seeing this, I'm like, ooh. Yes, they normally have a restaurant or something over here. Some home stuff, loads and that. Look at this, oh my God. Yeah. 
Wow, so many options. Whoa, the prices. The prices, though. This is like almost. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, it's cheap. It's like $3, $3.50. It's actually really good. Very, very, very reasonable. And fresh produce. So, our guide said we're probably gonna go to a viewpoint now. Sunset is in about an hour. But there's also a really famous place called Eden Island, which is like, a, I guess, the fanciest part, which we're gonna check out. Stopped here quickly by a gorgeous viewpoint where we can see all of Victoria, the surrounding um, stuff, <laughs> and some of the beautiful islands just outside, and Eden Island, which is an island built on reclaimed land, opened in, our guide says, 2012. So we're gonna head there next and see what that is all about. Eden Island, everyone. Reclaim land that I'm walking on right now. Really <laughs> this is so out beautiful. Wow. The yachts and, and the uh, mountain. Yeah. Our guide said everyone likes that they built this uh, because it's open for everyone. It's not like exclusive or anything. It is very pricey in terms of like living here and stuff, but he said that generally people like that they built this. I also like that our guide is like me. He thinks of the worst case scenario. So they're like, would you like to live on Eden Island? He's like, oh, of course not. Think about a tsunami. He's like, we've had one tsunami. But just think about it. I'm the same. I'm like, earthquake risk? No. This risk? Yeah, no. Yeah, live in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, but that's why even when we lived in San Francisco, I googled which neighborhoods are least prone to earthquakes. And obviously that's where we'd live if there was the huge earthquake everyone's oh, anticipating. Awesome. Don't want to blame anyone else, but given that we are where we are and we are on island time, which means that things happen not as fast as you would hope all the time, we don't get as much time to see Victoria as we would have hoped. So in the end, when we get to Eden Island, we only have like 20 minutes to actually see it. So things start getting a bit hectic. Stress eating. <laughs> we have like 15 minutes to finish this and then we got Hold on, full protective way. All right, we would have loved to see more of Eden Island, but we had to prioritize getting food <laughs> because we haven't had anything since breakfast. Now we're gonna head to the airport. It's so sad. So we went back to our driver dropped us off, but he is gone. So we're just hoping he shows up so we make our flight. It's very typical us to be like, yeah, we're gonna rush to the airport. Our check-in closes in an hour and a half. No, wait. The flight leaves in an hour and a half. We're not too far from the airport, but not having our driver here is not a good sign. I am really regretting that we didn't take this guy's contact info because uh, he is nowhere to be seen. Great. I think I tend to stay a bit calmer than Oscar in stressful situations. But I think in this situation, I'm keeping my calm quite a lot better than I usually do. He's got our bags, everything. Our passport. Our ticket to freedom. Our phone charger. Our dignity. Okay. Stop joking. <laughs> well, Dan wouldn't agree with me, but that's just how things go. The worst part is that everything here, of course, is on island time. So when we asked, like, how far is it to the airport, he was like, oh, it's five minutes. It's five minutes. We should have known better because I just checked on Google Maps and it's at least 10 minutes. Oh, so, okay. Not that big of a difference. But when it comes to our tight schedule right now, it can make a big difference. Okay, we found two cars that could be ours. Just on, like, the opposite side of the whole complex. Checking. Okay, so that's our stuff, yeah? Well, the stuff was invisible, but I'm certain that this is... No, but okay, check. Can you see our stuff in the seat? But actually, maybe this is not. I don't think it is. I've never shown a flashlight into someone's car in my life before, so I feel a bit sketch, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Oh my god. Okay, maybe it's actually arrived now over there, so maybe we should just go back. That's definitely not ours. Okay, I had a video with the registration plate in it from our car. That was not it. Is he coming? Is this him? 535, yeah, here it is. Thankfully, he shows up 10 minutes later and we make it to the airport right on time. Wait, are you trying rum? Yeah, so our guide inspired us, or me, to do something that is extremely unlike us. He said that one of the only things they really produce here in the Seychelles is very good rum. I, 
I don't even know what rum is supposed to taste like. Both Dan and I definitely did have our party period in high school, uh, and we kind of got it out of our system, I think. We enjoy feeling good. We enjoy a consistent sleep schedule as much as we can get when we travel. We don't also love the taste of alcohol. We always prefer non-alcoholic options. So here we go. This is coconut infused. Oscar will get a shot of it. Mm. Smells bad. This is no disrespect to the Seychelles. It's just that I don't really like any rum, not just rum from the Seychelles. Mm. Yeah. It's very sweet. Maybe that's why it's nice. It's not bad, but not what I choose either. It's not rum test. <laughs> And with that, it's time to leave Country 101 and look forward to new adventures. We're back to exploring new countries again, although at a slightly slower pace than before, and we can't wait to bring you guys along to Country 102, 103, and beyond. Until next time, see you around the world. Thanks for watching the video the whole way through, guys. It really means a lot to us, as you know, because we put a lot of love and thought and effort into these videos. And uh, yeah, it just makes us really happy. We assume that if you watch this far, it's because you enjoy the videos. Hopefully it's not the other way around. But yeah, if you do, it would mean the world to us if maybe you would consider sharing our channel with someone that you know so we can reach uh, even more amazing people like you guys. I also wanted to say that I know that we've tried out a different format for the last two videos and uh, we honestly don't know exactly how it's going to develop or how it's going to look in the future. But I think that's the beautiful thing about YouTube that we get to be creative and try new things and it doesn't have to be so serious. We'll see what happens in the future. But in any case, we want to thank you guys again for being so supportive and uh, standing by us regardless of what we do and what weird new things we try. So um, yeah, thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, of course, you can click subscribe so you never miss another video. And uh, until we see you guys next time, see you around the world.